Well, it's time to bring on some of your email questions for Pat to answer. And Pat, this first one comes from Douglas, who says, does God still use prophets today like he did in the Old Testament? Oh, I, I think he's restored the so-called gifts, uh, the, the ministry gifts of the Spirit, the apostles and prophets and pastors and evangelists and teachers and so forth. I, I think that people have those gifts and, and uh, I think the thing you have to be very careful of is directed prophecy. Somebody comes and says, God told me that you were supposed to do this. No way. No. Yeah. But speaking generally, I, I think the answer is yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. yeah. This is from Hattie who says, Pat, my husband was reading the book of Job and said that he didn't think that Satan could ask God to test Christians today because of Jesus. What do you say? Well, <laughs> Satan came and tested Jesus. Mm -hmm. very, his temptations in the wilderness are, are uh, fabled. Uh, Peter said, be careful, because your enemy, the devil, wanders about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So he's still on the hunt, and uh, we still have that. that I do think if you read the book of Revelation that Satan was cast down from, from heaven. Those timelines, uh, there could be some dispute as to when it happened, but I believe that he was cast to earth knowing his time is short. So he isn't necessarily before the counsels of God. In Job, the sons of God came before the Lord, and mm -hmm. Satan was one of the sons of God. And God said, have you considered my servant Job? But uh, as far as Satan attacking God's people, uh, attacking God's choice saints, of course, it, that's part of, mm -hmm. part of life. This is Ilana who says, I'm a 14-year-old girl. My mom got <clears throat> surgery a couple of months ago to fix a ruptured disc in her neck. She doesn't need to be back at work until this fall, but I'm worried she won't be better by then. My parents are divorced and my dad doesn't contribute. I feel like I'll need to get a job in case my mom loses her job. We barely make enough as it is. I need some advice because I think I'm too young to get a job. I'm worried. She's 14. First of all, Ivana, I think you are extraordinarily mature. Your whole attitude is wonderful. And uh, it's the kind of thing where God would bless. But let me tell you, there's some tremendous jobs involving telephone. You know, people are looking for telephone solicitation. They're looking for telephone answering. They're looking for all kinds of things. If you've got a halfway decent voice mm -hmm. and you've got obviously the smarts that you're showing in this letter, uh, I think you're employable. And the fact that you're 14 shouldn't make too much difference. You could get a job and, and do well. Uh, there are other things like, you know, bagging groceries and things like that where it's minimum wage, but uh, uh, there are certainly jobs for 14-year-olds, especially those that look at life the way you do. God will bless you. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think God might give her mother the health she needs by well, the fall, too. too, you know, that to go too. back to work. Yeah. This is a viewer, Pat, who says, I went to church on and off as a child and as an adult. People would say to me they were saved, but they didn't act born again. I thought I was saved, too. I've been baptized two times. I believe the Bible is the Word of God, and I believe Jesus died for my sins. Also, I believe I've accepted Jesus as my Savior, but I'm not born again. Is it possible I believe this in my head and not my heart? And if so, how do I get it from my head to my heart? Well, I think maybe you are and don't realize it. Yeah. You know, you have to take God at His Word, and then having received His what He says in His Word, then you begin to live it out. The Bible says, by this you'll know that you've passed from death into life, that you have love for the brethren. Just for example, you know, that's one way of knowing uh, that you, you, you are delighting in the Word. You delight the company of God's people. You, you want to be in fellowship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. But if there's any question, just go before the Lord and say, look, I am yours. I give you my heart. Do it. It's a conscious decision. It's not some emotional thing. And then focus on what the Word says and take it as truth. It is truth, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the way it is. If some Bill Gates type says to you, I'm going to send you a million dollars, you take him at his word, mm -hmm. but you don't enjoy it till you go to the bank and cash the check. Yeah. And so you need to cash the check. You begin to enjoy it and begin to live for it. But I, I, I think that's it. But he, yeah. believe the Bible. Yeah. 
Yeah. All Sometimes right. we think it's based on some something we have to do, some performance that's, that's we right. have to have. It's it's it is a faith issue. Sure. Okay, this is Essa who says, "I'm 16 years old. I've always had an unnaturally horrifying fear of being tortured and or killed for my faith. Is God trying to tell me something? Will God someday test me in this way because he knows it's my weak point? Sometimes I can't sleep at night because I'm so scared. What scares me even more is that I'm not sure if I would stand strong in the face of pain or death. What should I do? I think you'd better get your mind on the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Corey Servas told about her father, and her father said, Corey, you know, when we take a trip, and she said, yes, Papa. She said, you know, I have a ticket when I'm ready to travel, and then that ticket is the ticket for the, for the mm -hmm. travel. And if you're going to take a journey with God, He will give you the ticket before it's time to leave, but He won't give it to you in advance. And I, I think for you to sit around worrying about being tortured, I don't know where it came about, but I, I, don't, I think this is unwholesome. Uh, it may come from Satan, but uh, mm -hmm. I, I think you need to rebuke that thing, and you need to live in the love of God. Yeah, it's a spirit of fear. It's a spirit of fear. And mm -hmm. you rebuke that spirit of fear and command it, I mean, literally, with your mouth, command it to leave you and leave you alone. Mm -hmm. Because this thing, you need to be living. Uh, rejoice in the Lord always, the Bible says. In all things rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. And stop, I mean, spend your time praising God. I thank you, God, instead of obsessing on this fearing, stuff. Yeah. All right, let's get on with it. Okay, that's all the time we have thank for you questions. For